uh, insecurity in Nigeria is beyond uh, uh, the issue of farmers' headers uh, cr uh, crisis, which has been in existence for a long time. What we have now is an increase in uh, an increase in banditry and kidnapping uh, associated with a foreign invasion by certain persons who have a network that crisscrosses over about uh, eight West African countries. Uh, they have decided to make Nigeria a target. We are now a victim of an international attack by certain persons who uh, we, we, we've seen their actions before now in places like Senegal, in Mali, in Cote d'Ivoire, and uh, these are places that are a crisis. Africa in general, and, and especially West Africa, uh, has been a place um, uh, torn apart with crisis. We in Nigeria have been fortunate before now. We have been the ones sending uh, uh, Peace Corps missions to, by way of supporting ECOMOG, the ECOMOG uh, troops in, to, to bring peace to Liberia, to Sierra Leone. Uh, but this time around, it's our turn. We are faced with serious militia movements that, are, that, are, that, are, that want to destabilize our country, that want to make life un, uh, unbearable and make the state ungovernable. So the issue is whether our government is rising up to the challenge. And unfortunately, if I must answer that, uh, the government is failing. Uh, the security forces are failing. In, uh, the, 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 the leadership of the security is failing. And so we need to look at it from that dimension. We see foreigners. These are not people you know. Uh, they may be predominantly of the Fulani tribe. But what we're saying is that how can we have people, ordinary people, in the guise of being headers, uh, carrying AK-47, in a country where firearms are, are, are seriously regulated, only the president and to a small extent the commissioners of police can grant licenses to, to, to own ammunition. Not that kind of ammunition. You can't even, the president will, only the president can grant the license to own an AK-47. But you see, in the name of, uh, uh, you know, uh, rearing cattle or one livestock business, you find foreigners, not Nigerians, they're not indigenous to these communities. Look at all the people causing trouble in southwest Nigeria, uh, or in northeast, I mean, north central Nigeria, even in, um, and then going to, to, to south south Nigeria. These are not Nigerians, these are persons who, who, who broke through our poorest borders. So, this is just a reflection of the failure of governance in our country for a long time. And I hope that we get out of, the, out of it, because now that we are seeing complacency on the part of government and seeing this inaction and lack of political will on the part of government, I just hope that the, 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 the various conspiracy theories, which are not meant to be believed, but they simply serve as explanations because there are no plausible explanations, no meaningful and reasonable explanations that, 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 that can satisfy the Nigerian populace at this time. With the Nigerians now resort, Nigerians now resort to, to, to conspiracy theories saying that, oh, uh, the, uh, the Nigeria will be taken over by a certain tribe, tribe of men from Guinea, from, uh, from all sorts of places who want, to, uh, uh, who want to take over Nigeria by 2022. So this kind of hopeless situation uh, being corroborated by the Nobel laureate himself, Professor Wolin Sheikha, that he foresees a civil war in the next one or two years. I think we are dealing with a very serious crisis here. We need to, we, we need to really call this government to order, to realize that again and again, the principal role of government, according to section 14, subsection 2 of the constitution is to, to cater to the welfare and security of Nigerian citizens. So we cannot appear, afford a failed state. We have put too much in this country to fail in the, just because of a band of men who want to make our security forces appear lame and impotent. That is unacceptable. What do you think are the repercussions? I mean, he, he is doing this without the backing of the law, uh, but is it necessary? Some are saying yes, it is necessary uh, because the security personnel are not coming out to do anything about it. Let's have your take on it. You know, uh, Sunday Boho has just uh, risen up to a very difficult situation. And uh, why he's a hero is because so many people consider him to be acting in self-defense. 
Uh, Self-defense is uh, acceptable in law or in a situation where uh, somebody is under a, a, a grave threat, a threat that threatens, uh, uh, you know, that will threaten life, that will take life. And the situation you find in the Southwest, where for a long time, I, you know, when you hear people like Yinka Odumaki graphically talking about how much damage uh, uh, the headsman, in the name of headsman, because I want to make reference to Captain Aliu, the famous Captain Aliu's analysis, who is also a Fulani man, that what you see each time uh, Mietiala comes up to, uh, you know, to defend whatever actions that have been taken to uh, against, uh, you know, open grazing against head headers in any part of the country, they are accepting a problem that, is, that isn't theirs. So w when uh, uh, Governor Kredolu asked headsmen to leave government reserved uh, areas, you know, there was, it was a security measure. There was no basis for Mieti Hala to, to, to complain. There was also no basis for the presidency, as my colleague has referred to, to, to rise up in defense of, uh, a, against an, a lawful order of a governor. So going back to Sunday, Boho, it's painful and terrible that, you know, Nigerians will have to resort to self-help before they can secure themselves. That ought not to be. However, if, if, when, when you find militias, that be, you know, organized militias threatening to destroy life the way we have recorded in Agatu, in Benue State, what the way that it has been recorded across the land. When you see that the level of insecurity with kidnappings and banditry on the rise, you cannot expect that people who find one way or the other as themselves as ethnic leaders or community, community leaders will not in any way rise up in self-defense. It's a very difficult situation. Why those of us who are sticklers for the rule of law will not want anybody to create any form of an army to defend within this state, to, to create any form of a militia within this state, but we have had a militia that has operated in unbridled circumstances. No, it is better that we have some form of, you know, organized community policing, community security, as we had in, in Bono State. We, we don't forget, this is a very painful thing. Nigeria has been fighting insurgency in the last 10 years, and it has not been able to defeat Boko Haram. Now we have recorded some progress when the civilian JTF, a vigilante that has been organized by the locals in Borno State, decided to join forces with the, uh, the, the, the conventional Nigerian army, um, Nigerian military, before we started recording some progress. So I, don't, I, I would have expected that somehow the Sunday Boho intervention should have been with some blessing of the state governors so that the, he can work in, uh, in, uh, hand in hand with the police. You cannot do without the, 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 the call for state police. I have never felt so deceived by, by, by the APC government when it campaigned so loudly that they were going to establish state police when they, when they eventually have voted in. That was the only ground I, 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 I gave some sympathy to the APC. Only for the APC, four years after it's, uh, it's taken over power, we are in the fifth year, APC has not done anything, the Buhari-led administration has not done anything to ensure that the state police, you cannot have a unitary police operating in a federal system. You cannot have a police force right here in Abuja trying to go to, to police the local uh, you know, uh, nooks and crannies in faraway places like Obomosho and the rest of that. You cannot. You need to have a police on ground that is subject to the control of the governor as, in, as, as contemplated by section 215 of the constitution, which is not practical. So it's, I would have expected that this, if we are serious, if we are serious as a country and a people to solving this problem, in solving this problem that is facing us now, then we must quickly move to ensure that we can have some form of organized state police so that the governor will be able to protect those that voted him into power. How do you give somebody political power and he's not able to control any form of force to protect the people? That is useless and that's the situation we have. So we expect that Sunday Boho should be embraced 
and you know in, in a manner that he can cooperate with the conventional police so that we can have peace and security in not only in Yoruba land but all over Nigeria. We expect such men to rise up, rise up in the south-south, rise up even in the north-central where we are.